Hello and welcome back to Let's Try. We're trying more demos in the Steam Next Fest. This is Artifice War Tactics. Looked good. I don't, I don't really know much about it, but it, uh, you know, I do like and appreciate a good tactics game. I'm always looking for more decent tactics games, so I figured I'd try give this one a go. Would you like to go through the rules of the combat before starting the campaign? Strongly recommended if this is your first playthrough. Sure. Okay, we'll do the tutorial real quick. Real quick tutorial. Nothing could go wrong. Nothing, nothing would slow this down. Um. Uh. In Artifice, all characters move and set an attack zone known as Overwatch during their turn. Ah, classic Overwatch. When an enemy steps over an Overwatch tile, they trigger the uh, opponent's attack. Neither side can see the other's Overwatch zones. Well, that's kind of a, that's tricky. To inspect the character's movement and overwatch pattern, hover over and hold space. I was kind of hoping, uh... Okay. So I can't see the enemy's set starting position. I was trying to hover, uh, press space. Oh, okay, so is this our overwatch? Or is that just where we can place our unit? Um... Trying to see their overwatch, but it's not letting me. Okay, well, let's, uh... We'll just, we'll just go as is. What? Okay. Oh, uh, here we go. Every character has a movement and overwatch pattern to move and set an attack zone accordingly. Moving is mandatory for all characters unless they are blocked. Moving before a champion, uh, hover over enemies to see if their overwatch overlaps with your champion's path. I thought, I thought we couldn't see the enemy's overwatch. So this uh, shows us our overwatch. It's more kind of like a, a, a bullseye crosshair. After champion has moved, they can choose from one of the, the four overwatch patterns to set their zone of attack. Oh, okay, interesting. Hover over enemies to check which enemy's path overlaps with your champions. Okay, so you can see enemy overlaps. So I'll click on that, but I want to see the enemies. Oh, okay, we have to hold space for the enemy, not for us. Okay, so their overwatch is quite odd. Um, and I am not sure if they've already selected one, but I think we're okay. So we'll end the turn. So I'm not sure if... Um, do they have to move into my overwatch in order for me to attack? Because if so, then they can just move out of our overwatch and then nothing happens. Okay, so something did happen. We did manage to get an attack off. It seems to me like we're not doing any direct attacking in this game. Something I am going to look into the options for uh, kind of immediately is, um, and I'm not seeing it, is uh, those animations are very slow. I feel like this is the kind of game that could be could be quite um, peppy if, if uh, you're given the option to move the, you know, spice those animations up a bit. New champion has arrived. Each champion comes with different patterns traits and abilities that can be synergized with their allies to take down multiple enemies in a single turn okay so we can move them they're not yet in a position where they can be helpful we'll move them there um you never know it might be that they can be helpful maybe the enemy will uh you know be helpful and move into our our overwatch we are kind of like i feel like a lot of the strategy so far is relying on the enemy being very stupid and just like ending their turn in our overwatch so i'm not really sure how we're supposed to like are we just trying to like maximize the space on the field that we control oh wow that goes through that went through both enemies so i guess we have like piercing So their new, um, this guy's new overwatch is, is in, like, we're in our, the threat zone. Wow, they, they just kind of walked right into that. Okay. I feel like, just, like, immediately, um, my, my feelings regarding the strategy are that we're not really outsmarting the enemy. We're just kind of hoping that they do something stupid. Um... Oh no, I forgot to check their overwatch. It's fine. We have apparently like a ton of health. So if if we move out of their threat zone, are we going to be in danger? If we, we, we have to move. Okay, so yeah, we're only in danger if we move into a threat zone. 
So let's like do this. I don't know if that's going to be helpful, but you never know. It might be. Yeah, I guess it was helpful. So I feel like the strategy is like maximizing as much of the field as possible, control over as much of the field as possible. Um, which is which is interesting. And then uh, obviously avoiding the enemy's control. Time is of the essence. Strike hard and fast as the jazzes. Shards power wanes with every death. Reclaim provinces to reveal the stronghold boss of an island and take them down. Defeat any three stronghold bosses to lure out Theosis, the immortal, and put an end to his tyrannous rule. Once and for all. I'm getting a little bit of uh, Enter the Breach vibes from just like the overarching campaign here. And in fact, it looks like even when we look or hover over some of these, they are going to offer specific rewards. Yeah. Arcane plus one restore consume shirt. I mean, I'm not saying that the you know, I haven't seen this format done a bajillion times I, I've been seeing a lot of that crossroads kind of road uh, pathway thing for roguelikes and I'm assuming this is kind of roguelike Let me just double check No, it doesn't uh, it doesn't have a roguelike pa um, tag So maybe this isn't a roguelike and actually I kind of would welcome that But um, yeah, this this could be interesting I'm, I'm down for this. I have I have some reservations about the strategy, but we'll see. Maybe maybe it becomes a bit more interesting. Don't let enemies reach the marked zone. Red. Okay, so this time we're protecting a zone. Set starting positions for your units. Okay. And I mean, sure. Ready. Okay, so that's the red zone. We can't let the, the gobos uh, reach them. These are cell swords. I mean, they look like goblins. Um, we can see their area of control. I have to assume... Okay, so I guess those out that those outlines are just their movement potential. And then the uh, kind of more opaque uh, squares are their threat zone. So we can see their threat zone and then we can see their movement potential. Um, so we'll go over here. I want to maximize as much space over here to, uh, you know... For the sake of, of uh, blocking them this way so we'll we'll put that guy over there and uh, we, we'll have this guy one guy kind of keep an eye on this goblin over there and that seems like a, a pretty good area of effect that we've created there so if they move straight forward they didn't move straight forward darn right i guess i should have paid a bit more attention to their movement direction so I guess we're not outsmarting them because, or sorry, we're not uh, waiting for them to do something stupid because we can actually see what direction they were going to move in, right? So we can see that, I mean, this goblin, this mercenary, it's easy to tell that they're definitely going to want to move in this diagonal pattern. Um, but we also have to move in this diagonal pattern. So I guess what we could do is we could move over here because we know they're going to move over there oh but we don't have do we have an undo button in this it's always a okay well actually are we i think we're yeah we we, we kind of messed that up i messed that up um so you can see these lads are going to move in that direction i think i probably want to move in this direction and then put a threat zone here because then they'll move into that and then I don't know if like this lad has like piercing in the same sense. What is this? Can we can we can we see what their attack does? I wish we could. If we can't, then I wish we could. Um so this lad, okay, we can move diagonally without worrying. Um this person is going to move diagonally. So uh, we don't have to worry too much about this guy over here. They are an archer, so they have a very different movement movement pattern. This person could move diagonally, right? So what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to move this guy diagonally like that. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm already kind of wishing I had undo buttons. So we're going to double watch that square there. I think that'll help, but I really don't know. We only have to stop three mercenaries from getting to the red zone so if this guy over here makes it to the red zone then we don't have to worry too much 
it seems to me like um once once an attack has gone forward it's spent um so you you know it doesn't happen multiple times i should have i should have known that he was going to do something like that so this guy is kind of really screwed because he's he's stuck there I could move diagonally and take some damage. That wouldn't be a terrible idea. This guy's going to move diagonally to the red zone. Um, we're going to find out here. I'm hoping that he gets to continue his movement. Yes, he does. Oh, he, got, he, he takes two attacks. That sucks. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that if he makes this attack and kills this guy, which I'm not necessarily assuming is going to be true, um, then it will stop it from, uh, like from counting so this guy is going to move straight forward um so we're going to move this guy this way and then shoot this guy that way so i'm already i'm making some mistakes i mean it's my first combat sort of we got more goblins so that that goes forward i don't know how much damage we're going to do here oh wow that was pretty good but did we also do damage to our own lad it didn't seem like it then this guy's gonna take a double attack here. He took one attack and then he took another attack. And he did die, and it looks like it didn't count. Okay, so even if they make it to the red zone, as long as they die, it's okay. So we have three turns remaining. I do I am getting a little bit of uh enter the breach vibes from this, but that's good. Um I, I kind of I kind of appreciate this is a very different take on um the tactics genre now where is this guy, guy gonna go okay so the, they have a little thing on the ground that tells us sort of vaguely their direction pattern maybe no not really oh yeah 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 yeah. no it is totally um so i'm gonna move this guy here and shoot that way because that should hit that guy might even hit that guy as well i'm not sure i don't think so but we'll see and then um I'll move our sorcerers here and do a diagonal pattern there. That should probably take care of the second guy. This guy here. Uh, well, unfortunately, we have to move like diagonally. So we're going to move them here and then watch this pattern down. And that should cover that guy as well. And they can pretty much kill them. It seems like they have, they're powerful enough to just like one shot kill a unit. I'm assuming these units have different health amounts. Okay. How come those attacks went off right away? I guess I guess he did move into it. I didn't notice that. Oh, he made it. Okay, so I was kind of hoping that those attacks would get split. And he did not kill that. So I, I guess attacks must have a certain, like, amount, average. Like, five to six or something like that. So... Uh, I'm gonna double check that. I wish I had a bit more transparency of info. No, it's just five. So like, I guess different guys are gonna have different amounts of health. This guy, I guess, had six. Um, this guy's gonna move straight forward, so we need to protect that part. That should take care of that. This guy, um, hmm. I don't like any of these. Yeah, none of these none of these locations for him are good because they are all too close to that mercenary to actually do anything. So, I'm thinking unless this guy moves diag like upwards, which I don't expect him to do, I'm going to go ahead and have this guy Oh shoot. Ouch. Oh no, he died. Your champions can resurrect in battle through the Jazz's shards you possess. However, with each resurrection, a shard will be consumed. If all shards are consumed, the campaign will be over. Well, let's not do that yet. That was a dumb mistake. Um, this diagonal movement is an actual pain in the butt. Alright, let's um, move... Oh, see, this guy... 
Yeah, I, I'm, ha I'm definitely struggling, struggling with the interface here because, like, they want, I want, I'm meant to hold space, and then like for creatures, it's okay because it's showing me their attack pattern and their movement pattern. But when it comes to my own units, it's a little bit trickier. Maybe I'm just supposed to hold spacebar all the time. Kind of, I don't know. I'm struggling a little bit. So this is just like not gonna work. We're not gonna do anything there unless this guy does. No, no, never mind. That guy's turn is just completely wasted. All right, let's uh, end our turn and hopefully we can at least kill this guy. We only have one turn remaining, which is the good news. Yeah, nothing happens there. They have to move into the Overwatch. But did we win? Is that the last turn? Oh my God! Some we this guy actually got to do something. Incredible! And he pushes him back too. That's actually really cool. Select a spawn grid for the Ranger. I don't want to. Oh, okay. Win. Did it? So does it like? force me to spend a gem because I don't want to I didn't I didn't really like want to resurrect them okay well a, a reward is restores a consumed shard so on the uh, if it did spend it automatically then that's okay I guess because I am going to get it back I did get it back I guess okay um we got other stuff too we got something for a load of equip a champion your champions with items unlock their abilities or up upgrade their stats and trait as they level up. Concussive Blast, so we can upgrade that, maybe? Unlock for points. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit struggling under construction here. Okay, so some of these are not available. Represents the champion's health, represents the champion's damage. So we can upgrade that. For one, because we have two of those. And then we can upgrade uh, the Pyromancer ones. I wouldn't mind upgrading um, this guy. Since he did die, it seems like a good idea to upgrade that, their vitality. And sure, why not give them more strength as well? So they are... We, we spent some resources to make that happen. Um, so we have Gant Thrower, Storm's Bay, Kalados... Um, this gives us some more things we can spend on. This looks like it would give us another champion. Possible enemies, much the same. Shadow Ring, on dealing critical damage gain 50 plus 50 dodge for next turn. I'm never a huge fan of games like really leaning towards criticals. I really am not a huge fan of criticals as a mechanic, just in general. Um, Rends the target, causing them to take damage based on the distance moved. I like that more. That's interesting. Um, I feel like I'd much rather do this and we get something, get, we get some kind of uh, a weapon and we get some more resources that we can use to level up our lads. So let's do that. I know this game is uh, like, it's an early demo, um, but there's definitely things I would like to see improvement on. Some UI interface to make things a bit more readable. Um, I'm struggling a little bit with like where enemy, like if I'm holding down space all the time, then... Uh, I, I feel like there should just be an interface option or maybe it should just be a hover over like I'm not sure why there it isn't just hover over um, I know it's not in that screen, but um, Yeah, like I don't know It I feel like it should just be hover over um, So we want to do some damage to this guy. There's only really one direction they can go in so I feel like if we go, oh, we can't really cover it properly. So let's just go, we'll go here actually, not, not a bad place to go. And we'll be able to get a nice shot off on this goblin over here. Then we'll come over here. Yeah, this is actually a really good, don't let them reach the mark zone. We will, I'll try my best. This guy over here, we're going to be able to actually do some pretty good work. Yeah. We'll be able to hit that guy too. So we're going to be able to hit all the goblins. On this turn. 
I guess the, the next level of strategy is like knowing um, what, uh, what, what order are they going to go in? Right, because if there's a way to, to know that, then we would might we might be able to do damage to multiple enemies at once. So that guy went in a direction I didn't expect. They went down. So let's uh let's ex anticipate them going left and then have our mage there uh, cover that zone. This guy is gonna go right, maybe, maybe they're gonna go right. I don't know. <laughs> Um, we can't go up with our Pyromancer because we'll take some damage. This, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where, where to go here. Um, well, we'll have the Archer watch right because that, that should guarantee we do some damage. I w like, I wish you didn't have to move. I guess, I guess that's the whole point of it, right? You have to move and therefore you could ruin very good placement. Honestly, feel like just taking the damage. Let's just take the damage. Two damage. Not a big deal. I'd rather uh, do some more damage than just like leave them there for safe. Wow, they died from. Oh, there's burn damage going on. Okay, I didn't know about that. Ooh, this turned out to be a good move. Because, yeah, we, we, we shot through two enemies there. And then this last guy is going to move. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't move into range of anything. That's fine. Okay, so, you know, we've got, like, a very chess-based strategy in this game. That's that's the impression I'm getting, is that we've gone very, ch you know, chess-like with this. And I think that that is, is good. Um, I, I definitely like chess. I think, you know, it's it's classic, classic game. <laughs> um, and I kind of get it. I mean, I guess that's why I get Into the Breach vibes is because Into the Breach definitely is, you know, influenced by much the same. It makes for some, like, very tight tactics, you know? Makes the strategy feel feel really good. So we're going to get another good move here. Yeah. We did another... We did damage to two mercenaries again. And we're going to get that pop off. Oh, wow, and it did area of effect and burn. Fantastic. Uh, this went very well. I mean, on top of um, trying to get the optimal attack uh, uh, range, like um, area, we also want to kind of like block them from moving around. So like, you know, for instance, I could move here because their attack range seems to be like very wide. And now we've just like blocked that guy from moving in this direction. I mean, will they move towards me? The, the, the correct choice would be to not do that. But, you know, who knows? This guy is probably going to move back. So we could move here and then uh, make that area of effect work there. And, um, you know, I may as well like keep our sniper here because he seems to be getting those lucky shots and if we keep have the range on the spawn point then there's a good chance that um he'll get another double shot again that guy died of burn so i guess it didn't matter what we had going on oh we moved diagonally oh i, I didn't block him properly shoot okay well at least we get that and they're gonna burn to death Oh, and we get a double kill. Okay, nice. So the sniper got to do their thing after all. This guy's going to die of burn. Oh, I was like, I was about to say, if if we got that last move off, that was just going to seem like divine intervention. All right, let's put this guy here. Block this guy here. Um, We'll put our mage. Just double check that they're not moving into... An overwatch put them here mostly for this guy just to block his other path and then um this guy could move diagonally up we don't want that necessarily uh this guy can only move down so i just want to you know oh that was dumb that's fine i don't think the damage on our on our units matters if they don't die 
So they died of burn. I, I got to keep remembering. They just, they just die of burn. Oh, that guy's just going to make it. This guy didn't die, but we did kill them. So I, you know, strategy wins. I, I, it was all calculated. So, um, yeah, that burn is, is working out very well for me. Um, this guy, my problem with this guy is he's got two directions he can move in. Oh, I win. Never mind. I do think just victory after a certain number of turns is, uh, it, it, it feels a little bit too into the breach in that sense. I kind of wish it was a, there was like something I was working towards maybe. All right, load out. Let's, uh, let's have a look here. Can we give him a new attack? Oh, we could give him the volatile, uh, scepter. They would give him 25 burn. I feel like that is going to be better spent given to the pyromancer. Uh, do they already have one? No, they don't. And then we can give someone defense. I mean, um, I'll give this guy defense. Why not? Um, and then we can spend some points. Let's uh, level up this guy's vitality. So we've spent all of our points. And um, I forget how many like zones we have to beat before we're like, we uh, egg out the boss basically. On dealing critical damage gain to armor. All right, sure. I think one of the reasons I don't like critical damage, especially for a tactics game like this is because um, it's not something you can really, like, figure out. What is this? Escort the relic to safety. Okay, this is a bit more interesting. It's not something you can strategize around. You can't bet on doing a critical. Sure, it feels good when you do it. Um, I won't deny that, but, like, um, you know, I like to I like to bank on what I know is going to happen. So we need to get this relic to the right side and i'm assuming that it can take damage and we don't want it to take damage but now how are the how are, how are the enemies going to really do damage to it this is a new enemy type by the way i haven't seen this one before there's a chance if it moves first and again if i could if i could know when like who's going to go first then um you know we'd be able to find out repositioning feel a burn that sounds that's that voice sounds like very much like some kind of generated voice um we could we could know like how to form a double attack or something like that see what happens here if this guy moves first then we get to hit two nope never mind two mercenaries at once it would have been cool oh well i mean at least we do kill them But now we have nothing left over for this guy, and he probably is going to need more oomph to kill. Oh god, okay. Well, this was a good turn. We we got all of our attacks off. So this guy... Yeah, he's probably going to move as close as he can to the thing. Um, I don't really want to take damage from him, obviously. He's gonna he's gonna do damage to me no matter what I think no we can move over here and then there that covers that zone pretty well um and I'm gonna go here and protect that zone and have this thing move like down meanwhile this guy over here can pretty much pick off this this mercenary I almost called him a zombie for some reason Yeah, I figured this guy was going to take some extra damage to kill. He is dead, though. That's the good news. I'm glad there's no friendly fire. That would be a, a real bummer, honestly. Oh, I did not expect 
this attack to go off on a, a newly spawned character kind of is a bummer honestly okay so we're gonna move this diagonally up um just want to make sure that we cover our bases there this guy's gonna move diagonally up so we're gonna go ahead and move over here and protect that this guy's gonna move well he can move a number of different ways so let's bank on him moving either way and then uh, that way we cover our bases Repositioning. um actually i don't think that i can hit any i can i can hit him at all with the pyromancer she's just in a very bad position right now lots of enemies no it's fine I, again i don't know how the enemies are really going to do anything against my the relic when they they can only attack via overwatch wow these guys both didn't get their attack off that's fine these guys are kind of choked in right there like they, they can't really do much so we'll go we'll move over here and we'll oh god why did i do that it's fine oh Hey, maybe it's not fine really didn't pay attention see and in cases like those i wouldn't mind just like knowing um like just see, having a button i can press that shows me all of the threat zones on the map rather than like having to do kind of mental gymnastics maybe maybe that's me you know maybe it's a skill issue i don't know um okay not really super happy about a lot of this okay we'll we'll see what happens here at this point i'm not even like forming a strategy i'm just trying to cover my bases so i'm gonna get like no attacks off they're going all the you know direction i didn't account for okay here we go at least get to kill something my question is do they get to spawn in repeatedly forever it looks like is anyone watch okay no one's watching the diagonal so i can i can do that this guy, um, I mean, we have to keep, make sure that we also don't die. The fact that I have to move, like I have to move, it just sucks. Cause I, I'm in like this situation where this guy just has to take damage. Your wish is my he just, he just, uh, you know, is in a position where he's going to take damage no matter what. We're gonna move this person here and then watch those blocks and I think we're good I mean, I don't think I don't know if we're good, but you know, I'm trying my best here Would like to get a nice spicy area of effect off Okay, yeah, you guys are just like really moving in like the most awkward direction for me if We killed them that would be ideal oh and we got a perfect area of effect there that's actually amazing that guy will die on the next turn we don't have to worry about that um let's, oh, yeah that's actually fine if this guy moves in no oh, damn i was hoping to get like uber lucky there okay so is this guy watching okay we're actually good to move this thing straight forward um i'm actually more worried about my units than i am anything else Yeah, I, I kind of hope there's like actual uh, voice acting. Oh, whoops. Yeah, I mean, half the time I take damage, it's by accident because I, I don't see that represented on the screen. I, I know I can see it on the screen, but I, I, uh, I feel like I, I just like disagree with that. I, I would like it to be more transparent. All right, this is uh, we are going to win this one. It's just it's going to take a minute. That guy died of burning. They're just going to spawn in more goblins forever. Well, that was good. 
I have a feeling we'll be able to move our thing forward again unless this guy blocks it. He did block it. I might be able to move it diagonally. I guess, um, so like where I'm at with, um, you know, being, having my, you know, cards in front of me proper, like, I know that, uh, it's probably part of the game. Like they're, you know, they, they expect you to do the legwork of like figuring out where everything is, where everyone's going to attack, where everyone's going to move. And that's, you know, very much the strategy. How much health does this thing have? Eight? It can just take a hit. It doesn't, I don't need to protect it. Like completely it just it just i just need to get it to the other side um so i guess like you know the argument is like well you want i want all of the information to be on the screen or at least have a button that makes it available on the screen but if we do that then the game is going to lose a lot of its i don't know um strategy i guess or it's going to lose a lot of its difficulty and i i would argue that if your difficulty is based on a ui change then then it's probably not a, a you know a good method of creating difficulty um that's sort of where i sit on that um gonna go ahead like i i really don't know what i'm doing anymore i'm just like trying i'm moving like in very much kind of arbitrary ways fight me. fight me debate me Okay, let's make sure that we're not moving my pyromancer in a bad place. This seems like a good place to put that, maybe. I'm very close to to characters waiting for moves. Who? Oh, right, the actual the, the lad. Okay, I mean, yeah, like I'll, I'll take another hit. I don't care. Oh, never mind. It doesn't take a hit. I don't know why not. I thought that this guy was watching that zone. So we should be able to win on the next turn. I would also, I, I would say, okay, that's interesting. So you can push an enemy into another zone. That actually didn't benefit me. I would prefer that guy would just like, like it's cool that he died and all, but I feel like there were better moves. So I guess if I want to see this game taken to the next like level, um, you know, because I think that there is potential here. I would like to be able to see um, turn order, like who's going to move first, second, third. I think that the enemy movement should be represented as arrows instead of squares, because that is just super confusing to me. It's just a lot of things going on on the screen. Uh, arrows work. They're, they're good for a reason. Um, and it, it's very super readable uh and i'd also like to see a button that just like lets me see all of the information at once where everyone's going to move um and where everyone is currently overwatched that's uh i know that's like my backseat deving maybe i shouldn't do that but i mean that's sort of what oh so we didn't we don't get a boss okay that's fine um, I, I think I've said more or less everything I need to say about this game. I, I like it. I don't love it. <laughs> I'd like to see some things change, but obviously it's early in development, so it's, it's difficult to make like a, a clear, you know, decision or choice or um, criticism, I guess, on the game. Um, I definitely think that there's there's potential for for this to to become a contender for something like an Into the Breach, but right now it, it there's definitely some missing parts. But um, yeah, I, I don't I don't dislike this. I just I don't love it yet, and I want to. Um, that's sort of where I'm at. So this is Artifice War Tactics. Um, have you played it? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely hit that like button. Consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.